Hey, welcome to Unleash Your Tennis. In today's lesson, I'm going to answer some questions from a fellow subscriber. I'm going to shoot a lesson to help him address the problem. Are you ready? Let's dive into today's lesson. Alright, so let me read out a question of what the subscriber asked me. Here it goes. Hi Joe, I have improved forehand from your valuable tips. I lately found that my other problems are anticipation and panic while hitting shots. Can you suggest something to curb it? Regards, Ratesh from India. So after reading the question, I replied to him to dig deeper. And here is what he said. Hi Joe, thank you for the reply. I actually feel I anticipate the ball late and react late, which increases panic. This also reduces my swing and balance. This happens both in recreation and matches. Timing of the ball go haywire. One example is if the opponent hits deep, I get to the ball and the next ball, he puts it in the service box. I have to fully stretch my legs to reach the ball. The second thing is the contact point of the forehand is not good because I can't judge how much the ball flies up. If you can, kindly look into this. Thanks. I believe anticipation is a problem among many tennis players, especially those who just started learning tennis. All right. So I just want to say for anticipation, we as tennis players, we don't have magic powers to predict what the opponent is going to do for every shot. All right. I'm sure the top pros also can't predict every shot that his opponent is going to play. But what we can do as a tennis player is to improve our personal skills, and that is our technique. All right. Secondly, we can understand, learn how to understand what are the high percentage shots that the opponent is going to hit. And lastly, understand some knowledge, have some knowledge on court geometry so that you know where to position yourself for a better chance of hitting a good shot. Alright, so today's lesson, I want to share some powerful tips for you to improve your anticipation. Alright, so let's quickly dive into the first tip. The first tip I want to share with you is reading the opponent. Alright, so there are a few questions I want you to think about. Number, number one, when you look at the opponent, all right, first thing, where is he standing? All right, is he standing behind the baseline? Or is he standing inside the court? Or is he standing near the net? All right, knowing his position will help you to make better decisions. For example, if he's deep behind the baseline, chances are he can't really attack you. He has to put a top spin shot back into the court. To continue to rally. Alright. Unless you are playing with a professional player, he can hit aggressive shot from the baseline. If you are a recreational player, chances are usually the opponent will just return a safe shot from the baseline towards you. Alright. If the opponent is in the court, alright, be it three quarter or at the net, then probably he's going to be a good bit more aggressive. Right, so you anticipate the ball is coming faster and probably going down the line or cross court. Alright, so understanding his position will help you to make better decisions. The second thing to look out for the opponent is what kind of shot is he hitting? Is he hitting a forehand shot or a backhand shot? Alright, is the forehand his weapon or is the backhand his weakness? Alright. So if you understand his strength and weaknesses, then this can help you to anticipate the ball better as well. All right. Say for example, if he's sitting a forehand shot and you know that his forehand is his strength and carries a lot of top spin, so you may want to position yourself a little bit behind the baseline so that you give yourself more space and time to swing at the ball. If his backhand is a weakness, 
and you find that okay, his his backhand shot is always floating somewhere in the middle of the court, right? Then maybe I want to hit more to his backhand so that I can get an easy ball to return. Next thing, after you know whether he's hitting forehand or backhand, then you have to see okay, if he is he hitting a top spin or a slice. Alright, so if he's hitting a top spin, then you you may want to know that the ball will kick up high and you may want to move back to give yourself more space to hit. If he's, if he's hitting a slice, then you may want to anticipate a low skidding ball coming towards you. Alright, so reading an opponent is one key element. Alright, so to keep it simple for you, alright, if you are a learner, just do one thing first. Alright, choose one. For example, if I'm playing, I just want to take a little bit more notice on whether he, is he hitting a forehand or backhand. Alright, just keep it simple. Alright, for the next time you practice with a friend, deep down in your, in your heart, alright, read the opponent and just tell yourself, okay, when you hit a forehand, you just call out forehand to yourself. If he hits a backhand, just call out backhand. Right, so this, this will give you an awareness of what your opponent is doing and then you'll react better. The next tip I have for you is to react. Alright, after you read the opponent, the next thing you have to do is to react to the shot. Alright, I can't emphasize the importance of split step in this phase because it will definitely help you in your reaction. Alright, just imagine a car all right, who is, whose engine is idling. Okay, if you want to start the engine and move the car, it takes a lot of effort. Okay, so if as a tennis player, you are rooted to the ground, it takes a lot of inertia to move to the direction of the ball. So the split step comes in handy when you are going to react to the shot and the split step helps you to change direction easily. Alright, so the split step looks like this. Alright, where there's a, a small hop and you land with these two legs. Alright, so after landing, you have to push to the direction of the ball. This helps you to react faster. For example, if I want to move to my forehand, I do a split and I go. Alright, if I want to do a backhand, I split and I push off to the backhand side. Alright. So the split step helps you to react faster. So the next thing is, when do we do the split step? Alright, now the split step happens just when the opponent is about to strike the ball. Alright, many times players thought they do the split step after the, con after the opponent contacted the ball. Alright, if you do that, you're going to be late. Alright, because when you land, alright, the ball is going to come to your court and you're going to react late. Okay, so if you react when he or she is just going to strike the ball, by the time you land, right, the ball is coming probably just past the net and you are going to know where you are going, be it forehand or backhand. Right, so important tip is you split when the opponent is about to contact the ball. Right. After you reacted to the shot, the next part is to respond. Alright, so you're going to hit either a forehand or backhand, or even you may even need to go up to the net to volley or do a smash. Alright, so that's the responding part of the tennis rally. Okay, now in terms of responding, you have a few things to keep in mind. Number one, what is your goal? What is where is your positioning? Alright. If your goal is to keep the ball in play consistently, right, then what you need to do is to have a target in mind, put the ball over the net consistently over. Right? If you are out of position, then you want to hit the cross court so that the ball crosses the lowest part of the net and it's a safer shot. Okay? If you want to go a little bit, a little bit more aggressive, you may want to hit down the line. Alright, but it's a high risk shot because the ball is going to cross the higher part of the net. So make a decision on how you're going to respond. Alright, 
And if you have a quick decision, it will help you in the short quality as well. The last part is the recovery. All right, after you hit the shot, the next thing you want to do is to recover so that you are prepared for the next shot. All right, many people will feel that, okay, for recovery, I just need to come back to the center and wait for the next shot. All right, this is not true for all the time. Okay, and let me explain why. Okay, you have to understand a little bit of the chord geometry, okay, which I'll explain to you shortly. All right, once you understand the chord geometry, it will tremendously help you in your chord positioning. All right, now imagine I'm hitting a cross chord. Okay, I'm a left hander, so my cross chord, forehand cross chord is here. Okay, now if I, if I'm able to hit a nice deep cross chord to my opponent, all right, say for example, I hit a cross chord. All right, this is not deep enough. One more. Right, a deep cross court to the opponent. Now, after I hit the ball, where should I position? Is it all the way from here? I come all the way back to the center. Right, the answer is no. Okay, let me explain why. Now, assuming the opponent reached the ball and he can hit his best shot, all right, to kill me. What are the possible shots that he can do to give me a problem? One, he can choose to go from the cross court, he can choose to go down the line, right, which I mark out with the three balls, right, or he can return the ball at a very nice short angle to pull me out of the court. Alright, so you have two of these extreme good shots, one short angle, all right, he's going to pull me out or he's going to hit a nice down the line and I'm going to struggle. Okay, now given these two extreme good shots, all right, if we take out the angle, all right, the angle and divide into two and you'll find that my, my best possible position is somewhere here. Okay. Because I can cover the short angle or from here, I can reach out to return the down the line shots. Alright, so if you are able to hit a nice deep cross court, your recovery will be around here, near to your cross court position. Alright, similarly, if I hit a backhand cross court, Alright, cross court shot, my recovery will now be somewhere here. Alright, using the same principle from the court geometry. Alright, now, the next thing is, take note, if you choose to hit a down the line shot, alright, the opposite will happen. Your recovery will have to be further. Alright, so if I'm hitting a down the line shot, okay, let me use this ball. If I hit the down the line shot, okay, he can return back a down the line or he can return a short angle to my backhand. Alright, so if I divide the two extreme by two, my recovery will now be here. Alright, so I have to come back, go a this longer distance for recovery. That is why you'll find that a lot of pros they tend to engage in cross court rallies and very seldom they change direction. Alright, you only see good opportunity, then you change the direction. Alright, so I've covered four powerful tips for you to take away. Number one, you read the opponent, alright, see what they are doing. Number two, you react to the shot, alright, the most important thing is the split step. All right, you want to react to the shot. Number three, respond. All right, know whether you're going to hit the forehand or backhand. All right, volley or even a smash. All right, knowing where to respond, where to put the ball. All right, and lastly, recovery. Okay, you recover to the best position according to the court geometry. 
All right, so there's a ton of information in this video. All right, I don't expect you to try out all the tips. All right, I just want you to pick one, one tip and apply it in the rally and see whether there's any improvement. All right, say for example, you can choose, okay, I'm going to just focus on split step all the time for my next rally with my friends and see what happens. All right, then from there, you slowly build on and progress. All right, that's all from me today. I hope you have a great time and see you in the next lesson.